Hey guys, EBP Man here, and today we're going to take a look at the BNO E8 version 2.0. Let's check them out. Now, over the last several weeks, we've been reviewing several different earbuds. We've been looking at Master Dynamics, we've been looking at Sennheisers, we've been looking at even the new Samsung uh, Galaxy Buds. And you've been asking for the review of the B&Os. So we have them in the studio, been using them, and wanted to share with you the unboxing experience, um, audio quality, call quality, transparency features, um, also the uh, you know, the new charging case capability. Uh, and think about this. Uh, if you're wondering, I have the B&O's version one, should I upgrade? I am choosing between the Sennheisers and the B&O's or the Master Dynamics, should I choose them? Uh, or if you have the Galaxy Buds, which are incredibly affordable, should I consider the B&O's 2.0? Well, as we go through these features, I hope that this video is gonna help you make that decision. So make sure you watch it. I'm gonna include an index in the common area so that you can jump to the area that you are interested in. So let's start with the unboxing and let's check out these earbuds. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell icon to get notified when new videos become available. So now taking a look at what's in the box, uh, basically we'll go ahead and pop the box open and you're gonna immediately get presented with the actual case and the two earbuds. So we'll go ahead and move these aside. Now this, again, for those of you who have not been following uh, B&O, the 2.0 are relatively similar, if not the same, to the version one with the exception of the wireless charging case. Now, in addition to the earbuds and the case that you saw there, you basically have some accessories. And these accessories are key to like. So this cable that you see right here, you'll notice that's in blue because the case is in blue. If you have a white earbud set, a black earbud set, the cables are gonna be keyed the same to that. So we have that. We also have a series of earbuds, uh, silicone earbuds, and then we have two Comply Foam earbuds. If you never use Comply Foam, the Comply Foam are the squishy ones that kind of foam and then they expand when you put them in your ear. So they become, again, very comfortable and they have great noise isolation. So this is something that you may want to try if you are having you know, either too much uh, noise coming in or you just want to try a different type of earbud so they come included. And then what you have is a quick start guide. All right, so next let's talk about the specs. So you're looking at earbuds that support Bluetooth 4.2, which is disappointing because it should be Bluetooth 5.0, but you can pair up to eight different devices with these. Now the thing about these earbuds though, that even though you can connect up to eight devices, you can only have one connected at the time. So that means that if you are using these to connect to, let's say your laptop, and you get a phone call, you, it will not automatically switch to the phone to take that call. What you have to do is literally disconnect your Bluetooth connection from your laptop and then reconnect it on your, on your phone. That's a little disappointing given the price point and again, the fact that some of the uh, competitors already do this. So again, eight devices, uh, you can also then uh, pair them to different devices, but it doesn't automatically switch. Now, for those of you concerned that with the 4.2 and you know call dropping, distance, uh, let's say even you know, audio syncing, uh, have had no issues with these. So even though they're using Bluetooth 4.2, they do perform well. You have no issues with the overall distance, so 30 feet, not a problem. Uh, I've had no issues with call quality uh, when it comes to uh, the breaking of a Bluetooth signal. So everything is okay, even though they're 4.2. Now, the one thing I will mention is that if you have the transparency mode, which we're gonna see in a couple seconds on, and you are listening to music at the same time, or particularly what I notice is if you're streaming video with transparency on, that means hearing what's going on around you, at the same time as watching a video, you will have out of sync issues. If you do not use transparency, and you're you know, just using straight streaming, you will not have any sync issues at all. So make sure that you know that. Audio trans uh, transparency on, sync issues. Audio transparency off, no problems whatsoever. So now let's talk about the overall uh, weight and again, just looking at the earbuds. So as we look at the earbuds, the earbuds do have an indicator for left and right, and they have some contact points that um, when you put them in the case uh, are self-guided. And we're gonna see that they're actually magnetic, which is pretty neat. Uh, you also have the gels, and they pretty much look like all the other earbuds that I've seen. There's no physical buttons. There's, uh, you actually have tap gestures to turn them on. So when you take them out of the case, you have to tap them to turn them on. They just don't turn on automatically. Now, the, the other thing about them is that they're seven and six grams. So uh, the right one is a little bit heavier than the left because it has a larger battery and it also uses that slave and master mode. So you can only have 
your right earbud in your ear by itself. You cannot choose. So with the Galaxy Buds, you can switch from one or the other because they work independently. There's no slave and master mode. But in this case, this one has to be in for then this one to be to work. Um, and if you only want to use one, it's always going to be your right. Now, that being said, call quality, you're going to get stereo sound on these, but if you only want to use one, you will get you know the, the call quality coming into the one ear because that's the only one you have in. So you can use this for calls if you only use one earbud. Now, as we take a closer look at the earbuds, in addition to having the, the touch uh, controls, you'll notice here that you have mics. So you have two basic mics um, on each one of these earbuds. And when we do the call quality test, you'll let me know what you think about the call quality itself. Uh, if you want to see what they look like on, I'm going to go ahead and put one on each ear. And this is what they look like on. Now they are very comfortable, uh, fatigue free. They have good noise isolation. So when you put them in your ear, they do cover up uh, all the outside noise. So they're not active noise canceling. So they're passive based on the plugs and they're very comfortable. They will not fall out of your ear. Now, but one thing I will warn you is that I was not able to find any kind of IP rating on these. Um, I've contacted them for them to tell me if there's an IP rating. I'm sure there is one, but I would caution you, given you know the price point in these, I would caution you if you're gonna use these in the gym. Like if you're really working out and you sweat profusely, I'd be afraid that you damage them because there's really no indication of what the IP rating is. If you've actually found the IP rating, let me know in the comment area because I would love to hear from you about that. So just be careful. I would not use them for running or working out, but definitely for your daily commute you won't have an issue and they're fatigue free for multiple hours of use. Now next let's talk about battery life. Uh, the battery life of these earbuds is I would say uh, close to but not quite and on par with what we're seeing right now with a lot of earbuds. You have a four hour uh, battery life on these. Now one of the nice things about them is that if you do run out of power and you need to charge them after four hours within 20 minutes you'll get one hour of use. So they do have a quick charge setting like a lot of these earbuds do that allow you to kind of quickly get up to one hour to extend your use. So next, let's take a look at the case itself. Now the case, uh, this is the difference between, in my opinion, the BNO E8 one and this version. It's really all about the case. Matter of fact, if you're looking for a wireless charging case, you can actually buy the case by itself and still use your existing earbuds. Now, when we take a look at the case, uh, the case has three LEDs that will light up and it'll tell you what your battery level is. And in the front here, you're gonna have an LED that will light up as well. And that's telling you your charging level um, of your earbuds. Now, once you put this on a wireless charger, it will start to breathe, indicating that it's charging. Uh, when we open up the case, the case does have magnetic guiding. So watch this, I'm gonna take my earbuds and I'm gonna place them in place and they lock in. And I'll take this one, put it in and it locks in. And you can see that it's starting to charge. It's telling me that these are charging. Now, if I flip it over like this, you'll notice that they do not fall out. And again, because of the magnetic charging. Now, if I, uh, or the guiding actually. Now, if I were to take a wireless charger and I'll just use this one from Google and I'll place it on top of it, what you'll notice is that it's gonna continue to breathe indicating that it's charging. On this side over here, if I were to open up the earbud and I'm gonna just take one out and put it back in, what you'll see is the battery level of the case. So you'll see that it has uh, three bars. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is that you have USB-C here. So the USB-C is um, your charging methodology in addition to your wireless. So if you have a Samsung phone or you have um, a Huawei phone, you'll be able to wirelessly charge using your phone. But if you need to, you don't have a charging pad with you, you can always use USB-C for that. Now, the one thing I'll talk about is the discharge rate. And the discharge rate is how long does it take when you have the, bat, the earbuds in this case for the case and the earbuds to discharge normally on their own. And I have to say that this is one of the best performing uh, cases that I found and earbuds when it comes to discharge rate. And I think it's because the earbuds are actually off. So when you take them out of this case, you have to physically turn them on. They don't self awake. And because they don't are, aren't awake or in sleep mode, the battery life is really good here. So I've literally have had these in the case for a week and been able to go back to them. And like the bar in the back is maybe down to two, if any, uh, it, it just is really good. Uh, I haven't found that with the Sennheisers because the Sennheisers stay on and as they're on in the case, just waiting for you to pick them up, put them in your ear, it's continually discharging and my Sennheisers don't even last a week. So if you're looking for something you can put in your bag, something that will just, you know, when you pick it up, it's gonna have a charge, these are definitely it. So next let's talk about the transparency mode. So the transparency mode works good, but it's not great. And the transparency mode, which you're now seeing not only earbuds, but over the ear headphones, uh, really allows you to hear what's going on around you. So with these, the one of the things that I'm really disappointed with is that what you hear is very digitized. 
while you can um, augment it and increase what you can hear, the quality of it is not at par with even some uh, more inexpensive earbuds. And let me show you the app for a second. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these on, start them up, and then I wanna show you what the transparency mode looks like. So as you put them in your ear, I'm gonna tap just to enable them. And we'll see if it connects. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the application. Let me just launch that. All right, so now as we look at the application, you'll notice here that you have a transparency setting. Um, you can move it up to this point and then you can start hearing things. But again, I hear my, I can hear myself speaking and it is very digitized. It is, it's almost like a buzz. It's like a slight buzz. And that's what's disappointing with these. As I go to the next level, you can start to hear more and then you can go to 100% and it's gonna give you even more hearing abilities. And the hearing abilities, it's almost like superhuman. So it's, it's pretty cool that it can get that level of transparency. But the bad thing about this is that if you have it at this level, which is the three, uh, you will be able to listen to music at the same time and still hear what's around you, which I prefer if I'm walking down the street, if I'm on the train, if I'm on a plane, I wanna hear sometimes what's going on. If I increase transparency to 100%, I can no longer hear any music, no streaming, nothing will happen. If I have it at either this setting down here or this setting and I'm watching a video, it will be out of sync. So you cannot use transparency at all for those settings. So next, let's talk about audio quality. So bass, mids, highs are all present. And if you're an audio audiophile and, you like, uh, and you're looking for something that's high quality, these definitely have that high quality uh, sound stage experience. But here's the one thing. If I'm comparing these to the Sennheisers, the Sennheisers really blow these away. And let's face it, so I've been really critical on the channel of Sennheisers because of the defects, the Bluetooth issues, my connectivity issues, uh, those are all true and I still stand by that. But one thing I will not take away from Sennheisers is the audio quality. They have the best when it comes to the audio quality uh, when it comes to any kind of music genre that you're listening to. Now I would put the B&Os in the same class and I may get some negative feedback on that, but I put them in the same class when it comes to price point and also in my experience in the past with these type of, or their brand. So the quality though is not the same. So I find that the Sennheisers are better from an audio perspective and let me tell you why. So I'm gonna go into the app and uh, we're gonna go into the one touch area. So you'll notice that I have it in the warm setting and that's because I'm trying to get the level of bass that I get from the Sennheisers. If I keep it in the middle, this is gonna sound great. And I'm gonna tell you, if you've never heard the Sennheisers before, you're not gonna know what you're missing and you'll love these. If you compare these to the Jabra, if you compare these to the Google Buds, if you compare this to the Galaxy Buds, you're not gonna miss them and you're gonna love them. But if you put on the Sennheisers and you can actually hear the difference, then you're gonna start questioning uh, why you picked these up. Now, what I did is I said, you know, I wanna get them closer to what the Sennheiser sound like. So what I did is I started bringing it up here so I can do that. Unfortunately, what happens while the bass started to come in and it felt warmer, it also kind of muddled. Um, it was very, uh, it was almost like hearing things through cotton. I lost a lot of the definition from the mids and the highs. So it's almost as you sacrifice one attribute in order to get the other. And I haven't experienced that even with some of the lesser brands. So if I look at Sennheiser, I can adjust things and you don't lose any kind of audio quality. If I think about the Galaxy Buds, I could do the same thing. Um, they can only go so far. Same thing with the Jabra, same thing with the, um, any of the other ones that we looked on the channel. But with this one, when you adjust this area, you actually lose quality. Now the other piece of um, audio quality is the call quality. Stereo sound, very clear. Uh, I did get some feedback from the people that were listening on the other side that uh, they could tell that I was on earbuds, that I wasn't on a dedicated uh, piece uh, that you know is just for calls. Uh, and they uh, did complain about how the sounds, uh, you know, my voice was on the phone. And, and in many cases they asked me to switch. So what we're gonna be doing in a couple uh, minutes is we're gonna be doing a call quality test so you can hear what it sounds like. But from a stereo perspective, you get them in both ears and the person on the other side sounds really good. Um, I just question the way I sound to them. Now taking a look at the app, the app is a pretty basic app. So the app gives you the ability to, uh, first you have to register and it's frustrating because you have to put in your email in order to even get this far. So you have to register and then you'll be able to come into an app and you have the ability to either uh, 
you notice a very simple play with volume control. You have the settings, so I can say if this is what I like, I can go into my pre personal preference. I can go into my commute preference, clear, workout, you know, different type of settings here, or for podcast or voice. And when I go into these different settings, it's basically going to show you know, where it's at. So that one, you'll notice how it came down to relaxed and bright uh, for that setting. So I could go ahead and make all those c control changes. And, and pretty much that's it. There's not a lot that you can do in the app. You do have product settings, you have a product guide. So if we use, uh, if we take a look at that for a second, let's see, here you can see all of your settings. So everything is very tap based, you know, single tap, double tap, you know, voice activation, uh, accept the call, reject the call, end the call. So those are all the controls. So they're pretty standard. Uh, and, you know, sometimes what I find is when I tap, Sometimes I have to tap a little bit harder than I would like. So the responsiveness of the tap probably could be improved as well. All right, so next we're gonna do a audio test of call quality. So what I have is some background noise that's simulating what it would be like to be in a very noisy environment. And right now what you're doing is hearing how it sounds in my studio. So we're gonna go ahead and switch the earbuds. Now this is what it sounds like coming through the earbuds. Let me know what you think about the call quality. Am I still clear? Am I muddled? Am I speaking in front of the noise? Is the noise behind me? Where is it? Um, how do you think about the call quality of these earbuds? Now we're doing this in the studio setting as opposed to doing it in a coffee shop uh, just to see the difference. Let me know what you think about the call quality in the comment area below. So that concludes our review of the E8 2.0. Uh, so should you upgrade? Uh, in my opinion, if you have the first generation, keep the first generation. Uh, if you want to have a wireless charging case and that's what you're really into, you can always buy it. If I had to choose between these and the Sennheisers, i choose the Sennheisers. If I had to choose between these and the Master and Dynamics, i choose the Master and Dynamics. If I had to choose these, sadly, between this and the Galaxy Buds, uh, because of the ability to be able to use either earbud, uh, I would probably choose the Galaxy Buds. Uh, so the audio quality on these, while it's superior than to the Galaxy Buds, uh, I still like the convenience of being able to use either earbud, and also I like the battery life. Um, also, the lightweight and the fitness of them. So uh, these, again, uh, are great for those of you who are devoted fans to B&L and you're looking for wireless earbuds that are next gen and have the wireless charging case. So let me know what you thought about this review in the comment area below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.